<laughs> Closing out the AFC East, we're going to move to the New York Jets. And there's never really been good things to talk about with the Jets in uh, in at least a decade. Obviously, when uh, when Ryan was there, you know, you had uh, uh, you had the franchise, you know, uh, Mark uh, Mark Sanchez. Um, you you had all kinds of different stuff going on. That this was a good team at one point, and since then, nothing good. But uh, but you know, and now you got Robert Sala coming in. It looks like a, a new day. It looks like you got two starters in the first round. I mean, lots of stuff. Obviously, they had needs basically everywhere. Um, but quarterback, tackle, cornerback, uh, linebacker, and running back were big needs for them, and uh, and they hit on basically everything. I think. Um, yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> we'll go through this list, but at, aside from the Patriots, I think these guys did the best job in the draft for drafting for need, drafting for value, drafting for potential, everything else. They had a lot of bite to the apple, and and I think they hit on a lot of them. Uh, quarterback Zach Wilson with the number two pick from BYU. Um, you got your guard or tackle, whatever you want him to be, Elijah Vera Tucker out of USC. Uh, also in the first round, they had to move up to get him, but... And, and while I don't necessarily agree with moving up, because I think you would have been able to get him where they got him. Oh, I disagree with if, that. If that's your guy, like, go go do what you do, right? I think too many people need an offensive line, and I think he was mm-hmm. the third best offensive line yeah. in this draft. You're probably yeah, right. He was. Don't go get him. You're not getting him. Definitely the best interior alignment in the draft. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I disagree with you there. I think if they don't move up, he's not there. And you, you might be right about that. Second round, they got Elijah Moore out of Ole Miss. Uh, love that pick. You know, you and mm-hmm. I, Chris, have talked about Elijah Moore a lot. Uh, he is a speedster. He is, he's awesome. He's awesome. Uh, running back Michael Carter out of North Carolina. This dude was a beast for them last year uh, for North Carolina yeah. and Mac Brown and that whole bunch. Uh, so getting him in the fourth round, kind of a steal in my eyes. You know, everybody talked yep. about Javante Williams being the uh, the better of the two. Look, you, you can't convince me of that. Like, both of them were uh, superstars at that school. Round five, this is where you start taking flyers. Safety, Jamie and Sherwood out of Auburn. Yeah, he's a playmaker. Cornerback Michael Carter, the second out of Duke. Um, cornerback Jason Pinnock out of Pitt. Then you get to the sixth round, Hamsa Naziruddin out of Florida State. Nicely done. <laughs> you got cornerback Brandon like Eccles pro. out of Kentucky. And uh, defensive lineman Jonathan Marshall out of Arkansas. All of these guys can play. I, I think the Jets did a pretty good job of scouting and figuring out where they'd be able to get value with, the, with a bunch of these late picks. I mean, they had three picks in the fifth round, three picks in the sixth round, and took a bunch of dudes that that you have seen actually be able to produce. I, I'm a fan of this. I think they did a, yeah. an outstanding job. Me too. I think it's the best draft in the division. Uh, I always have a soft spot for BYU quarterbacks being a 49er guy, of course, because I love me some Steve Young and even a little bit of Ty Detmer. So I love me some uh, BYU quarterbacks. I don't know a ton about Zach Wilson. I didn't watch a ton of BYU games, but obviously everything I see this guy has – upside through the wazoo and he, and he should be really good for the jets and obviously he's going to be better than sam darnold uh that michael carter pick in the fourth round when i was watching the draft everyone i was watching had this guy as the best available guy going through the third round so this seems like a real steal here and you gotta remember we're talking about a jets team that was toting the rock with frank gore 457 year old methuselah frank gore was their, their bulk of their carries, and then, you know, these guys they bring off the street, Adams and uh, the Michael P. Ryan, I think, or one yeah. of the P. Ryans was got, over there. Somebody, Samaj P. Ryan yeah. or Michael, I don't know which one. So I think they nailed it on the head. Elijah Moore, I love that pick as well. Get some weapons for that offense. I think the Jets nailed it out of the park. The best interior lineman in the draft. A lot of people, I was hearing a lot of people saying Zach Wilson might have more upside than Trevor Lawrence. I don't, I'll leave that up to you guys. You guys are the experts on that. He's, uh, let me, like let me go on and stop you. He's, Zach Wilson is very much boomer bust, right? Um, okay. he, he sees all of these, uh, when, when you watch him play, you can see Patrick Mahomes. You can see, like, this guy that is super athletic. They, I'll tell you what they called him his freshman and sophomore year. He was Mormon Manziel. That's what they called him. Uh, he's he can throw it from any angle. He can run the ball. He's he can scat away from any kind of defensive pressure. He's awesome with that. But his junior year, he had eleven touchdowns and nine interceptions. Didn't play Oof. well against good defenses. And obviously, the BYU schedule last year kind of soft. So it's you can see the potential. Um, sure, he's not necessarily there yet, but I mean, he he's going to be the starter. You got James Morgan behind him and Mike White. Like, that's your other two quarterbacks. Honest he's going to gonna be the guy. 
I watched every NFL game twice for the probably the past 10 years as I cover the NFL. I've never heard of those two players ever <laughs> once in my entire life. I don't know who the fuck they are. I'm dead serious. Who are they? That's I, I got no idea. No idea. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. So uh, go, go ahead. Continue on. I didn't want to, uh, you know, distract too much. Oh, but no, we, that, that we was it. That was it. I like what you just did. Won it, won it here. Yeah. And uh, I want to hear Chris bag on Zach Wilson. I feel like that's coming. No, not, not, not at all. I'm the Zach Wilson defender. Okay. Out of oh, all okay. the guys, we did our live draft. Every one of those guys bagged on, 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 uh, from West lot, Gary, same thing, but there, you know, you talked about the, the schedule being soft. How many good quarterbacks have we seen come from small schools before where they ended up being just fine? That's ridiculous. This kid can make every throw. If he is, quote, unquote, a bust, it's because the Jets organization failed him. All right? That, that is that – there's no other reason for that other than that. This kid can play. He can make every throw. He's exciting to play. That team is just garbage right now. Okay? Yeah. So, while I think they've got some good guys coming in with him, they're all going to be rookies. All right? They're all going to be carrying somebody else's shoulder pads for a long time. And those guys have no business making somebody else carry their shoulder pads because they all suck. There's not a playmaker on that roster right now. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I think he can play. I think he's going to be just fine. I like him a lot. And uh, once again, like I said, I think they got the third best offensive lineman in the draft. I would have loved for that dude to have fallen to, to Cleveland um, or, 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 you know, for Cincinnati to uh, trade back up and, and, and get him something of that nature. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'm not crazy high on Michael Carter, the running back. Uh, it, it, and my reasoning is this. If there are two running backs that came out of the same college that both ran the hell out of the football very successfully and they run completely different, I just work under the assumption that it was the system. Okay. That, 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 that's something that, that North Carolina was just doing better than everybody else. And the odds of them both coming into the NFL and being any good is pretty slim. Okay. That's a, so, so totally fair. I'm not a big fan of that. Elijah Moore. I love that pick. I think Elijah Moore is explosive, crazy exciting. I thought he should have been a first round guy, um, fall into the second round only because guys in front of him have bigger names. I assure you that Elijah Moore will finish as a better wide receiver than half of the wide receivers taken in front of him. That's just going to happen. Go. This guy can – the game is is now going to a deep ball game, and this guy tracks the deep ball better than any dra any wide receiver drafted this year. Nobody tracks the deep ball. He is Stephon Diggs 2.0 when it comes to tracking the deep ball. He goes and finds the football, and he runs to it. You don't have to throw it to him. Um, I think that's an amazing thing. Uh, Sherwood, the same thing. You're talking about a guy that played big boy college football at Auburn against LSU, against Alabama, against Georgia every year, against A&M every year. Um, he knows how to play defense. He's He's been, you know, in some good schemes. He'll he'll be able to play the rest of these guys. You know, they, they've got – they're just flyers, all right? They're, they're late-round yeah. guys that you're hoping a few of them can come in and play. And guess what? There's a really good shot for them, too, because there ain't a whole lot of depth on that team in front of them. So yeah. – Yep, you were right about that. Agreed. Don't don't forget also undrafted free agent Kenny Yaboa, uh, tight yeah, end. Like I, I, I thought Kenny Yaboa <laughs> should have gotten drafted. Shocked Same here. He didn't. Yeah, that's that's a huge un, uh, 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 undrafted signing. Yes, yes. I agree. Uh, also, free agency for them. Uh, Greg Van Roten, right guard, brought him in, mm -hmm. uh, and then they they filled up their wide receiver room. Corey Davis, Jamison Crowder, Keelan Cole. Like they brought in some guys that have some experience that can probably help out Zach Wilson uh, quite a bit. Uh, they brought in Carl Lawson, you know, defensive edge help. I mean, they, this team looks uh, better on paper right now than they than they did any of the last three oh, years. Oh, well, right at like, the top, you have Robert Saleh, who is an absolute monster and a great defensive mind, replacing the pathetic and useless Adam Gase. So right there, I, right I, off I'm the top very, of the I'm board. I'm very curious to see the offensive uh, scheme that they're going to run and, and, and so, what yeah. they're going to do there because this is this is a guy I don't know a whole I'm, lot about. I'm trying to think of successful dual running backs taken from the same school. All I can think of is Jerome Bettis and Ray Zellers back in like 1992. Am I is there so anything the two, else? The, so the two most famous is Cadillac Williams, Ronnie Brown. Ah, uh, very and good. Yeah, Cadillac I think would have been fine, but his entire career in the NFL was injuries, injuries yeah. and yeah. Ronnie was a stud with the Dolphins yeah. for a long yep. time. Um, yep. That's that's the only two that I can remember where both guys got into the NFL from the same class, and both guys were really good. Right. Cadillac being really good is very, you know, quotation. One or two good. years. He had the, he had a thousand yard year his rookie year, I think. Yes, didn't he? yes. Yep. When he yep. was healthy, he was a monster. But when he was his availability was just non. It was just right. non existent. 
Yep. Right. You are correct. All right, we are done with the AFC East. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.